I invite all who are able to please rise for our call to worship this morning. God has given us this beautiful earth and all that grows and runs upon it. Thanks be to God. God has given us breath to live and spirit to soar. Thanks be to God. God has gathered us into a community of care and worship. Let us worship God with love, thanksgiving, and praise. Let us pray together. God of power and might, help us to recognize the imprint of your love and mercy in our lives. Open our hearts to that love that we may grow in our faith and be strengthened in our witness to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. And I invite the children to gather around, um, to perk up your ears, and to listen closely. You might be able to, <clears throat> excuse me, you might be able to see the apples here in front of me, and then down below we have squash, and we have pumpkins, and we have peppers. What else do we have? Onions in here. Um, there's all kinds of gourds, there's corn, there's all kinds of things, all wonderful, um, delicious things to eat. And all of these things have been recently picked or harvested, and I know you guys probably all know so much more about harvesting than I do, um, but it's, it's a fun time of year when we, we see the, the growth that has happened. But thinking about all of these things that are here in front of us, or maybe you have in your gardens, they all started out with a seed. Now these are pretty big seeds. I don't know if you're going to be able to see them on there. These are bean seeds, so they're kind of big, but some seeds are really tiny. How many of you plant gardens with seeds in them? I know sometimes people start with a plant already growing, but it still has to start with this little tiny seed, doesn't it? We can see that little seed. And then to think about how it grows into an apple. Well, that grows on a tree, but the apple and the pumpkins and all those things. We plant this little tiny seed in the ground. And we water it, and we pray for sunshine on it, and then we wait and we watch it to grow. And we get up the weeds out of the way so that all that good soil can go just for the plant. We nurture it. That's what it's called, nurturing and caring for that plant. But you know what? A lot of growing has to be on faith and trust. First, we have to trust that these seeds we plant are really what they're supposed to be. I bought a package of seeds one time that were labeled wrong, and I didn't get what I wanted. But it's all about faith, and it's about trust, and it's about love, and it's about care. And when I think of those words, faith, love, care, nurture, I think about God. And I think about God planting these little seeds inside of us, and God loving us, and God taking care of us so that we grow and grow and grow into the people God has called us to be. And that we remember that when we care for one another, we help these seeds to grow. We help one another to grow. So remember today, that you are loved and that you are cared for. Today, besides being Harvest Home here at Saren, it's also um, the Children's Sabbath, which is celebrated across denominations. And it's a time when we remember that um, children are loved and cared for, but not all children are loved and cared for in the same way. But I want you to know that you are always loved and cared for by this congregation. And I want to share this prayer with all of you. Grace and peace to you, our children. We will always give thanks for you. We pray for you constantly because we love you. We love you just as God loves you. We know, children, uh, we know, children of God, that God loves you so much. There are no words to express it. There are no wonders we can perform. But we know that the power of God is in you. We can see it upon your faces. You remind us of God's love. Teach us to see the world as you do. Surprise us with the wonders you see. Show us what gifts God has given you. And we will bless you and protect you 
and we will always give thanks for you. We will bless you in the name of our God. We will bless you again and again. Grace and peace to you, our children. Grace and peace to you, who show us God's glory shining through your faces. We have a choir anthem, even though we don't have a choir. Um, we thank you that we, we have these, uh, uh, that they were recorded, and so we can hear you and we envision you sitting up here and sharing your gift of music with us. to curse technology, um, but most often I am grateful for it as it gives us that opportunity to then share music together and to share our worship together as well. This morning our scripture comes from Matthew's Gospel. We're still in that final week. We're actually still on that on Monday of Jesus' last uh, week on earth. And we hear this continual confrontation between Jesus and the religious leaders there in the temple. And this morning we read from chapter 22, verses 15 to 22. Then the Pharisees went, whoops, yep, that's right. <laughs> then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, 
We know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one. For you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malicious, uh, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. <coughs> then he said to them, Whose head is on this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. Please pray with me. O oh God, that last week of Jesus' life here on earth are so filled with stories some that we know and some that we don't, some that seem straightforward and some that confuse us. But they all have a message for us. Open our ears to hear it. Open, us, open our eyes to see your presence around us and in these words. May the words in my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you this day. Amen. The Pharisees and the Herodians have come together to entrap Jesus. Now these are two groups of people that you would never, ever have thought would have gotten together and would have agreed on anything. They were really ideologically and politically opposed to one another. It was almost like if the Ku Klux Klan and the Black Lives Matter movement got together for some reason. You just can't imagine it happening. Yet here in scripture it happens because they have the same enemy. They're against Jesus. So these Pharisees who were not all that happy with the Roman occupation Although they didn't really do anything to oppose it, they kind of negotiated a way of functioning under it, but they still opposed the occupation, get together with these Herodians who were supporters of Herod Antipas, who was King Herod's son, that King Herod who wanted to have Jesus killed. And they were collaborators with the Roman Empire. And and Herod was this puppet ruler who was put in place. So these two groups of people, again, come together. I think my mom had a phrase about, you know, common enemies, or I can't remember exactly how it went. Maybe some of you know about how that can bring forces together that you wouldn't think would come together. But they come to Jesus with a question. Now they really, they really don't care about his answer in particular. They don't really care about whether it's lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not. They don't want his opinion on that. But they really want to trap him in some way. Because if Jesus says that it's lawful to pay taxes, then those Pharisees have a reason to uprise against him. And more importantly, that crowd who always follows Jesus and is gathered around him in the temple, they will be extremely upset because they're the ones that are oppressed by these taxes. But then if he says it's unlawful to pay these taxes, well, then there's those Herodians who will probably run right over to the authorities and report Jesus to them. Maybe you know what that's like. Someone asks you a question. What do you think about fill in the blank? <laughs> Ever been in that situation where you're just not sure how to answer, or even if you should answer at all because you're not sure what's behind that question. What are they getting at? So you kind of hold back a little, maybe you dance around the question just a little bit, trying to get more information so that you answer it in, a, in an appropriate way. 
what is motivating them to ask you this question? It's always important to know who you're talking to and why you're talking to them, I guess. Well, Jesus knows who he's talking to. He knows they're trying to trip him up. And even though they flatter him or attempt to flatter him with all these compliments, oh, we know you're sincere and you teach the way of God. You show deference to no one. Oh, you regard all people with impartiality, Jesus. So we want to know. Even though they flatter him, he knows that they are trying to trap him in some way. Remember, this is happening in the temple. So when Jesus doesn't answer their question, but asks them to produce this coin, he kind of shifts the spotlight a little bit. Because those coins, they wouldn't have been in the temple. Remember, Jesus drove out the money changers. He tipped the tables. Those would have been the coins all over the floor. So for these religious folk to have this coin, was somewhat telling in some ways as well. And so he shifts the spotlight onto them. Show me a coin. And whose image is on that coin? It seems like a simple request. But it's loaded. It's loaded with lots of meaning. Because you see on that coin, and oh, I thought that was, there was one, oh, it was during the scripture there was a picture of the coin. Um, would have been the head of Tiberius Caesar, who was the son of divine Augustus Augustus. That's what it would have said on there. And so from a Jew Jewish point of view, this would have been a blasphemous image because it would have been the graven image. You know that commandment about having no graven images. That's why it didn't belong in the temple. That's why they traded it for other coins because it held this image. Because who besides God could be divine? other than Caesar acknowledging or saying that that's who he was. But these religious leaders take that coin out of their pockets as if it's no big deal. And Jesus says, give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's. If this coin belongs to the emperor, then give it to him. But it's the second half of Jesus' answer that is really the answer to the question. Because he says, and give to God the things that are God's. What are those things that are God's? It was easy to say this coin, this coin they were holding belonged to the emperor. But what belongs to God? What bears the image of God? In confirmation class, we went over the creation stories. What bears, I'm not going to call any of you out there here, but what bears the image of God? We do. Humans. Remember, we were created in the image of God. So God lays claim, not to the coin, but God lays claim to us on our lives, on our whole lives. And our whole lives should be given to God. That means we participate in God's mission, listening to God's word, doing God's justice, loving kindness, and walk, walking humbly with God, as the prophet Micah would say. It's not just about a set of beliefs or something we do on Sunday mornings, but it's about a way of life. It is about every single day we live and in all the situations we find ourselves. And sometimes living as the people of God, as it, you know, God having claim on our lives, it can sometimes put us at odds with other people. Look at in Jesus' day. He was constantly at odds with the status quo, the way things were working out, with those who were powerful and in charge. It may not mean we go seeking out. Jesus didn't side with 
those um, who were resisting Rome and, and went out and, and uh, would fight and cause battles and things like that. It doesn't necessarily mean we do that. But it means that we stand up to those values and principles of God. That we care for the least of these. That's what Matthew's going to say in a few more chapters. That Jesus says, when you did it to me, or to them, you did it to me. That we care for one another. We care for those who are most vulnerable because they are our neighbors too. And that we treat one another with honor and respect. Not malicious, hip hypocritical questions like those Pharisees and Herodians. We don't try to trap one another. We listen intently, wanting to know and to understand. We want the best for ourselves, but we also want the best for our neighbors. Especially those who don't always agree with our opinions or our ideas, or our stances on things. Because we all know we can be a community, and we all know we can care for one another, even if we don't always agree. Actually, it probably makes for a more diverse and wonderful community when we don't always see eye to eye on everything. But it's about how we treat one another. Because each one of us each one of you sitting here in the pews, each one of you watching online, each person that we encounter bears that image of God. Is it lawful to, to obey the emperor? Sure, Jesus says. But by the same token, it is more lawful to obey the God of love, justice, and mercy. I want to end my message this morning with a prayer that was written by Hans Hasnagel, and it's based on Philippians 4 and Psalm 106. And I think it's a perfect prayer for the times we find ourselves in. In times of difference and division, save us from rancor and meanness, O oh God. Help us focus ourselves on things that are excellent and worthy. Make us witnesses of your justice and righteousness. Transform us and transform the world, we pray. Amen. Um, we have a few prayers this morning to lift up. Uh, we extend the, our Christian sympathy to the family of Eileen Struve, who passed away on Monday, October 12th. Um, and her funeral will be on Tuesday, late afternoon, at Suhan Funeral Home. And then to the family of Wayne Schultz, who is Sarah Malk's stepfather. Wayne passed away suddenly on October 15th, um, and so we extend our sympathy to the family. And also, um, Virginia Brown will, um, had a knee replacement uh, this past week. She is home, um, she's recovering, and I know she would be grateful for your thoughts and your prayers as she recovers. Um, from this surgery. I know there are prayers on your heart, things that you are joyful and excited about, um, things that you are sad or worried or care about. And know that all those prayers, we lift them up to God this morning as we join our, our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. Oh God, you never said it would be easy to be your followers. Our UCC statement of faith says the cost and joy of discipleship. We like to focus on that joyful piece. And there is so much joy. But there are things you call us to do that sometimes seem impossible. That sometimes seem to go against those around us. You call us to see your image in one another. And to be honest, oh God, there are sometimes people that it's just so very difficult to see your image in them. But help us to open our eyes. Help us to open our hearts. 
And even if we don't agree, we can still treat them with love and respect and care. Oh God, we lift up those prayers that are on our hearts. Those joys in our lives, those things we're excited about and happy about, those things that are going our way or present opportunities we never envisioned or imagined. We also lift up those concerns, those things that cause us worry and hurt, those things we grieve over, the people we love who are sick, the people we care about who are dying. On this day, we lift up the family of Eileen Struve and Wayne Schultz. May they feel your presence around them in their grief. May they find comfort in one another. May they find joy in the memories that they share. And may they know that these were lives well lived, gifts to each and every one of us. We pray for Virginia and for healing and wholeness. We pray that she has patience with herself as she rehabs her knee. Give her courage and strength. And may she know that she is lifted up in our prayers today. Oh God, the world we live in just seems so divided sometimes. But you are the bridge builder. And you call us to build bridges as well. Hear us now as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our offerings are also one way we plant seeds, where we hand those financial resources of ours over to someone else, trusting that they are used to spread God's word and God's mission in this place and beyond. So with joy in our hearts, let us receive this morning's offer. God, with gratitude and thanks, we offer you the first fruits of your harvest. We bow humbly before you, remembering that all that you have done for us, and acknowledging that everything we have comes from you. With thanksgiving and praise, we offer these gifts to sustain and bless the work of your church and the care of your people. Amen. Now I know it's going to be hard um, during this last song to not want to lift our voices in song. But if you feel the need, just kind of hum along with the words. Listen um, as you all, because this is a um, a tape of all of you singing, um, We Are the Part of the Land. It is too important of a song in the history and in the tradition of this congregation not to play it this morning. So sit back and enjoy yourselves singing We Are a Part of the Land.
our prayer is that next year we're belting that out um, with one another. Please stand for our blessing. Bearers of the image of God, go out into the world that God loves and share that image with all the humans. And look and recognize that image in those humans. Go in peace. Amen.